Hi, my name is Morgan Keeley. I'm eight years old and I live in East Greenville, Pennsylvania. When I was born, the doctors told my parents that I was born deaf. But I was really just waiting to hear when I was when I was one years old, I got my first implant and attended Clark School and my grandmom used to have to drive me one hour to get there and when you get an operation for your ears, you don't just hear when you go home. You have to attend a Clark school so they can teach you how to hear. And my teachers were so awesome, and they taught me how to hear, hear really, really good. And when I was three years old, I got my second implant, and I attended Penview Christian School, and they were awesome too, and I just love it, and I would like to tell you a little bit about myself. I love to swim and do violin and gymnastics and do four-wheeling with my pop-up, and it was really hard to find a good helmet to fit over my ears and one time we just found the perfect helmet and I could really ride for a real life just with my new helmet and I also have my own Facebook page and because it's called Morgan's Magical Ears and I pay it forward and by dona donating lots of buckets to um, CHOP, I mean, Children's Hospital, and they get filled with a lot of fun stuff for the children. And, and I've almost donated 500 buckets to a lot of people around the world, and thank you for listening to my story. Recording, Lachlan. First, hearing. first hearing aid. Are you ready? Yeah. <laughs> okay. This is the, the big this moment is the here. Moment. She's gonna hear something. We don't really know what. We're gonna roll this on. I'm gonna push on your head just a little bit. There you go. Creeping. So now technically your device is on. <laughs> Can you tell? Did you hear it? <laughs> hey, I sound. You're <laughs> hearing yourself better. Okay, you can cry. That's okay. Hi, Cooper. <gasps> Hi, Cooper. <laughs> Hi, baby. Sounds good. I know I look like an elderly munchkin, but do I sound like one now? <laughs> Oh my god, I can hear myself. Yeah. <laughs> That's good. It's okay. Blue. Blue. Orange. Orange. Red. Red. Black. Black. Oh, purple. Purple. <laughs> <laughs> what do you think? <laughs> What is it like? Yeah. <laughs> so different to you. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> sound clear or does it sound muffled? It sounds clear. I'm so happy for you, Mommy.
held his first newborn hearing screen at the hospital. Then he failed two more. After telling us not to worry, it was probably just fluid buildup, we were discharged from the hospital with a referral to our local audiologist. As a mother, I was just about inconsolable. I think we all knew something was wrong, we just didn't realize how big that something was. We saw the audiologist for the first time when Abbott was four weeks old. Longest appointment ever. After performing several shorter tests than an AVR that took over two hours, the audiologist matter-of-factly announced that she got no responses. Being naive and having no idea what all these tests were, I thought, and said out loud, no responses. That's a good thing, right? The audiologist shook her head no. So he didn't hear anything. Again, she shook her head no. So are you telling me our son is deaf? Yes, she said. As she was leaving the room, she handed my husband and I a book, instructed us to read it thoroughly, and to call her in a week. No responses. He can't hear. He's deaf. A thousand thoughts and emotions were swirling through my mind and body. For lack of not knowing how else to react, I cried. Not just cried, but sobbed. An incontrollable sob. At just five months and one week old, Abbott received his first cochlear implant. He was activated and heard our voices for the first time one month later. We knew immediately that Abbott was getting benefit from his implant. In no time at all, he was turning to his name, recognizing strange noises in our home, and at just shy of a year old, he said his first words. Naturally, that word was mama. At 11 and a half months old, Abbott was implanted on his other side. We spent the first two years traveling three hours one way from our home once a week for therapy appointments. It wasn't easy and I cried myself to sleep on more than one occasion, but he was thriving. He was hearing and he was speaking. With each passing day, Abbott's vocabulary got larger and larger. Eventually, he began to string simple sentences together and then paragraphs. Fast forward to today and in August 2015, he will begin kindergarten in a fully mainstream class, his only accommodation being an FM system. We turned a baby that couldn't hear into a four-year-old that never shuts up. In fact, one of my proudest mommy moments was when we got a note sent home from daycare that he had to sit in time out that day for talking. I know I shouldn't have, but in my mind, I was secretly high-fiving my little guy for getting in trouble for talking. While we certainly didn't ask to be thrust into the world of hearing loss, we've been tremendously blessed to be surrounded by some of the most caring and supportive professionals, friends, co-workers, and parents one could imagine. I couldn't imagine going through this process without the support of other parents that we've met in real life or online. All of us have a common goal, and that's to help our little ones lead happy and successful lives, achieving whatever goals they set their little hearts to achieve. Cochlear implants have changed our lives in ways that words simply can't adequately describe. The look on Abbott's face when he heard our voices for the first time made all the tears, struggles, fights with insurance, fears, time off work, miles log to and from appointments, it made it all worth it. And we feel so blessed to have such an amazing success story to share with people like you. Abbott may have been born deaf, but he has proven to all of us that he was simply waiting to hear. What did you get a time out today for? A talking. You were talking too much? Yeah, give mommy a high five. We'll take that time out.